going to go now into our Q&A. We have some great questions already. Um, and if anyone has any other questions, we would love for you to add them. We'll also save a couple minutes if anyone wants to come off mute and ask their question live if they don't feel like typing it out. Um, but Sophia Bender asks, how many lessons are in each module? Which is a really great question. Um, Jennifer shared that each lesson is supposed to take about 50 minutes and each of the three modules has multiple lessons. Ken, do you know around how many lessons are in each module? So it really varies. So, and it kind of is because we are following the mathematics of it um, and uh, the project base. So it would vary. Some of the the mod, the very first projects, they're about four, um, four or five lessons. And then um, the second project for each grade level is a little bit longer. So it'll be, that'll be closer to like, um, seven, eight, nine. Um, and then the projects, the third projects, they're longer because it takes, uh, it's really more design time and, and you get a little deeper into the mathematics. So those are, those run around 12 lessons. And Ken, can you share from your experience with teachers about how much of the school year do teachers often spend on these lessons? Not enough, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, it really varies. So some of the teachers would do, you know, everything and go all the way through it. So, you know, you might be spending um, five, six weeks on it. And then other teachers, they just don't, they don't have as much time, like the the pacing in their district maybe is different, or they have other things. I mean, y'all have been in enough classrooms, so um, they might only do it for three or four weeks. Thanks. Um, and then somebody asks if we have instructions on how to go from Tinkercad to the 3D printer. Um, they think with good instructions, they'd be able to do this on their own without tech support. So in our, here, can, can we share our website a little bit? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll do you want a screen share? The website up, uh, that's funny. Yeah, I'll share. Um, so we have a brand new website. Please go to it after the after the webinar. Don't go during the party. Um, uh, but you can see we have we'll have our curriculum units up here. Um, you'll be able to download those modules. You go down there. Uh, we have a functional learning section that's being built out. We have tons we have tons of resources, but uh, we're still populating the website. We have a whole section on three D making resources. Um, we had a question earlier about what kinds of the printers, the, the printers that we are now sort of most recommending, and it's sort of like a, um, a combination of price point as well as the quality, as well as uh, sort of just general usability, are the Ender 3 V2 Neos. Anyway, if you can ask about it later, but um, they're, they're much faster to build than, than the previous. Um, what, when we first started the project, uh, there's no such thing as COVID. Um, and then about a year in, COVID hit, and all of a sudden we were having to send printers across the country and having to have teachers build them themselves when they uh, hadn't necessarily expected to. And they did great. Like 90% of the teachers were able to, to build their printers successfully. And now it's much easier because they've, they've come out with new models. So we have a whole section of resources. Um, so there's there's the 2D to 3D, I'll just open up the PDF. So there's kind of a guide um, that talks through all these different steps that you would need to need to take. And um, for at least the next uh, month and a half or so, uh, happy to accept any questions and, and support you in any way that, that you need. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. And maybe I should add that we're planning to have some office hours if folks are interested. So definitely reach out to us um, in the short term if you have questions. Um, Sophie asks how long it takes to make something like the dice. I can start off on that question. It can be super variable. I have a really low cost printer just behind me that I'm pointing to, like you can see. I think it was just over $100. Um, and it's pretty low powered. It took me like 35 minutes to print a dice. Um, but you know, if you have time, you can plug away at it. I know, Ken, you've done larger prints with multiple dice at once. Can you speak to that? So, and this is a really good math problem for kids to run into. 
um, because they'll say like, oh, I want it really big. And you're like, yeah, that's going to take forever to print. So um, if you've done any 3D printing, you know that they're not fast. It's not like a laser printer, right? Like this is sort of like Gutenberg press kinds of days for printing uh, for 3D. So um, you do talk to the students about like, well, if it's a certain size, that will take about an hour. Um, and so then they get to uh, they get to consider that, and then um, if they design it too big, you're like, I'm I'm not printing it. I'm sorry, uh, I can't wait all day for for just one person's print. But if they're working in groups, right, you can assign the groups to get a little more printing time, um, and then they can figure out how to how to do the scaling. So it really depends on on what they're on what they happen to be printing, like the bookmarks, uh, which is the first module, the first project. Um, you know, those will each print in about 20 minutes. And then there's teacher tricks that you get into um, when you know that the kids aren't paying attention to the exact volumes, and then you like shrink things down, like for the for the bookmarks, if they designed it and it's like, whatever, five millimeters, you're like, you know what, they don't need a five, that doesn't fit into a book. So I'm just going to print it out at one millimeter thick. And then we've gotten just a a um, couple questions about the open sourceness. So all of these lessons are completely free and open source. That means that you can do whatever you'd like with them. So if you want to translate them into another language, you're welcome to do that. You don't need to do, and you can delete graphics. You don't have to keep the pagination the same. The kind of license is open for you to remix. We're really just hoping that folks will use these materials with their students in whatever way they need to. Um, so please feel free. There are um, documents are up as Word documents, so they're pretty easy to edit and do whatever you'd like with. And on, the, sorry, go on, on the web page where you download, you'll see a, a, an explanation of what our license is. Yeah, perfect. Um, okay. We will share a link to the recording, and when we send out the link to the recording, we'll again link where all of the um, curriculum is and all of those resources that Ken was just showing. And Elise, I just wanted to mention, if you do do that, we totally want you to do that. Um, if you could just share it back with us, uh, that would be awesome because then we can, um, we're just aware of, and people really care, right? Like the funders for future projects care. One of the, somebody asked about, will we have a high school one? And we're definitely thinking about like going into high school or even going down to lower grades um, and doing the math that, that works there. Um, with the same kinds of concepts and integrating the design and the and the math and the computational thinking and spatial reasoning. And if you don't have Word, you should be able to open a Word document in Google Docs. It might kind of throw off a little bit of the formatting, but it should be, you should still be able to access it. And if you can't, again, just, just contact us. We're super happy to be supportive. Then we have some folks who are letting us know that content for lower grades would be really helpful and asking if we have anything, any plans for high school lessons or algebra, algebra two lessons. Oh, I like that comment about normalizing 3D printing for girls. That makes so, so much sense. Thank you, Bridget. And our lessons are aligned with fourth through seventh grade standards, but we've seen teachers use them outside of the grade level that they were originally designed for. So you can absolutely take these lessons and adapt them or just use them wholesale with younger students or with older students. Um, we've heard really good things about that as well. So when somebody asked about what kinds of devices that the um, that the kids might need for designing for the so they we we use Tinkercad um, is the the platform that we that we support um, or that supports us, and um, so we've had kids use it on iPads, on um, Chromebooks. I don't know um, whether somebody's used it on Raspberry Pi. I, I, it probably depends on the web browser that um, Raspberry Pi supports. You can do it on a phone. It's a little bit hard on such a small screen, but in a super pinch, you can. Um, we have a question from Shelly. Do we have any research on children with identified learning needs? 
Hmm. That's, that's something we would like to pursue in fu future research. I know we have students among the children that we've um, done this project with who do have special needs, but we don't actually know which ones they are. We just get a report from the school saying you served X number of students like that. And one of the things we're, that we're going to do in future projects is really do some focused case studies on particular groups of students. And that's one group we want to make sure and include. Yeah, thanks for that question and that answer. Are there any other questions that I've missed in the chat? If anybody wants to ask their question live too, you can request to come off mute and I can let you ask your question. And Ken, do you want to send insert the address? Oh, okay, we got it. Um, for those who want to share. And if you're not able to copy, sometimes it doesn't let you copy from the chat. So if you're not able to copy Ken's email right now, we'll include it in the message that we send to everyone. Um, with the links, all the links and everything. Shelly asks, do we provide any special tips for working in groups? Yeah, we do. Um, we found that a lot of times teachers aren't quite sure what to do as they visit each group. I'm there, I'm seeing what they're doing, now what? So for each phase where we recommend group work, we have a little section called Circulate And, and we give them a list of specific things they can watch for, questions they might want to ask, that kind of thing. Well, and also the... Um... There's something about working in a group that changes the dynamic, obviously. I mean, lots of math teachers and STEAM teachers have group work. Um, but like Katie said in the um, in the video uh, about the, the kid, Brian, um, it really can change how uh, sort of the role that the kid is, is playing in the classroom uh, when they're taking on a different kind of mathematical task. In this case, it was uh, designing the board game. Well, if folks think of more questions, they can put them in the chat. We're hoping to use these questions to populate our website's Q&A. Um, so if we don't get to answer today, it'll appear on there. Um, we have a few last party games to play with you all. Thanks, everybody, for engaging in that Q&A. Those were really excellent questions. Um, the there's, last activity... Oh, at least there's one more in the chat, in oh, the Q&A. Q oh, thank you. Um, do we offer professional learning on the units? Yes. Yes, and you should contact us through the website and we'll get back to you and work up a special plan for you. Yeah, thanks for that question. And then Catherine asks if there are videos that demonstrate how to lead the lessons and use the equipment. Um, they work with teachers that have limited PD opportunities. So there's, there's the answer is the Yes and no. Um, there, there are a lot of videos that that are available, um, but uh, as we know, the maybe the most important uh, professional development is the stuff that happens in in these trainings that are kind of more face to face. Um, so we'll have to think about that, Catherine, as to how we can. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, time zones makes a big difference, and doing things asynchronously. Um, we'll have to look through and see what. Uh, all the materials we do have that would that we could just sort of plug and play. <laughs> 